Hi yogis, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lo and I'm so excited to have you here. Now before we get started, I have to address the elephant in the room, my tragic couch. Please excuse her. I refuse to replace her until my children get out of the stage where they think it's a trampoline. Okay, so <laughs> I also have three cats, so you'll see their handiwork here on the end in just a second when I move my props. But today I wanna to talk with you about some yoga postures, some asana for realigning your hips. Now this is gonna be a practice. I guess anyone can have uneven hips, but I'm really speaking to the mamas out there because my hips are uneven because I'm a mama, because I carry babies on my hips and I have consecutively since 2019. <laughs> and um, my hips, uh, you know, I've taken a hit for it. And uh, that's created a lot of dysfunction throughout the rest of my body. You can see my knee brace right now. My knee issues are actually a result of my uneven hips because my knees are having to overcompensate because my hips are uneven right now. So I wanted to share with you in case you are a mama or someone who has uneven hips, you can have uneven hips for reasons aside from, you know, carrying babies on your hips. Uh, if you have one leg that's longer than the other, if you have scoliosis, um, these are things that can also create uneven hips. Um, so I wanted to create something and share with you guys a couple of things that I'm doing to really help realign my hips to create more ease and functionality throughout my entire body to eliminate knee problems um, and also just, you know, create overall a greater sense of harmony and functionality throughout my entire body. So before we get started, I feel like I have to legally say I am not a physical therapist. I am not a doctor. I'm just a yogi and a mom, and um, I'm using the knowledge that I have and the resources that I have to support myself through this particular season of life. Um, if you feel like you have a more severe case of um, uneven hips, then I do encourage you, you know, seek physical therapy, maybe go to a chiropractor, something like that. Um, again, I'm just going to be sharing, sharing with you the things that have worked for me. At the end of the day, please listen to your body. Please listen to, you know, whatever professionals you have in your life who are also giving you advice. Um, and at the end of the day, you know what's best for you. So listen to your body, listen to your intuition. Um, before we dive in, let's just take an assessment, right? So immediately look at yourself before you kind of do any of these postures. I'm going to encourage you to take an assessment of your hips. Now I'm standing right here. I can't see myself in the camera right now, uh, but I know because I've already assessed this for myself that this hip over here, so my left, possibly your right, you're looking at me, uh, but my left hip right here is the one where I always carry babies, right? So my babies are always right here on my left hip, uh, which means, you know, things have shifted over to this side, created some uneven length in my legs. My hips tend to shift this way. And if you look, you'll see that this hip tends to sit a bit higher than this hip and again this is creating dysfunction throughout my entire body specifically down into my knees a little bit of discomfort in my ankles things like that so I want to work on correcting this right so the first thing that I'm going to suggest that I have been doing now this would probably work better if I had a yoga block I don't have any blocks so I'm using a child's play toy <laughs> but we're just going to take this ball we're actually going to get on the mat so we're on an even platform here and you just gently put it between your thighs and then you're going to stand up in your mountain pose and then you're just going to gently squeeze the ball or the block you can, if you don't have either of those things then a towel would work fine too but you're going to squeeze and you're going to begin to feel the activation in the core so another key player in this entire thing is your core your pelvic floor so that's, that's another thing that I'm working on right now is re-strengthening my core, my pelvic floor. I had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back babies in 2019, 2020, and 2021. So re-strengthening, especially my pelvic floor, has been huge in this whole process. So when you do this, you're going to squeeze the inner thighs together, and you're going to feel the activation all the way up through your, your, your lower abdominals um, and into kind of this area right here. You're, you're, it's, and it's a deeper core activation. So you can do this. I would recommend doing this, <laughs> excuse me. Typically I'll do this for a 30 second increments. Uh, so I'll do it for 30 seconds and then I'll take 10 seconds off and then 30 seconds, 10 seconds off, so on and so forth for, you know, five to seven times, however, I'm, whatever I'm feeling like for that particular day. But this is really gonna help to, to begin to re-strengthen those deep core muscles that play an integral part in your proper alignment. Now you can also do this same thing in a bridge pose. So we're gonna move into that. 
You're just gonna come to lie down on your mat and in your bridge pose, you're gonna lie all the way down. You're gonna bring your knees, your knees are gonna be bent. You're gonna plant your, the soles of your feet into the mat. I typically suggest having the heels of your feet to where you can touch them with your longest fingertip. Then you're gonna bring your ball, your towel, your block, whatever you have, put it in that same position. You're gonna squeeze your inner thighs, and as you squeeze, you're gonna curl your tailbone under and lift. And again, you're continuing to engage those same muscles in your deep core, but now you're also engaging your glutes, your hamstrings, maybe a little bit of your quads. So just this entire kind of area right here, and all of that strengthening is going to help and support the realignment of your hips. So again, doing this for 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off, for you know, a handful of times, five to seven times, however feels good. Uh, I typically do this every day, every other day, at least, at the very least, a couple of times a week. Uh, it kind of depends on you know, where you are, uh, how, I don't wanna say bad, but <laughs> how bad uh, your hip misalignment is. So those are two things that you can do. You can also use a foam roller. This one is a little bit bigger than what I would recommend. They make much smaller ones that would probably be a lot better, but this is just the one that I have on hand. And I like to do this on the side that gives me the most problem, which is again, this left side. So we're gonna lay it sideways and then just laying on it. This is so not like uh, technical. My language is not technical at all but just laying on it. And then you're gonna prop yourself up a little bit with this bottom leg. Well, the bottom leg kind of floats, but you're gonna prop yourself up on this back foot here and then your elbow and your forearm here and just roll kind of on this back muscle uh, that connects your, your lower back with your hip. And I don't know about you, but I get really, really tight there. So just rolling that out is so helpful. And it relieves, if you have, if you experience a lot of low back pain, a lot of hip pain, uh, because of uneven hips or for any other reason, then that's going to be really, really helpful for just relieving some of that tension and some of that pain that you're experiencing there. Now, I would recommend doing this on the other side just because what we do one side, we want to do to the other. So we're avoiding any further um, dysfunction or misalignment. But what I typically do is I'll do a little bit longer on the side that gives me the most problems. So I might do 60 seconds on this side and only 30 seconds on the other side because it doesn't need as much attention, but I don't want to give it absolutely no attention, right? So foam rolling on kind of, and again, it's like right here, this area right here that you're going to foam roll on. Um, if you don't have a foam roller, then you can use a tennis ball. Um, or any other kind of smaller ball that you can kind of roll on. Now that's gonna be a little bit more <laughs> uncomfortable than the inner thigh thing that we did just a second ago. Um, you're probably gonna feel a little discomfort. Go to your edge, right? Yoga teaches us to find our edge, go to the edge. Don't really go beyond the edge, right? We don't want to force anything. Um, so find your edge and just hang out there. Nice deep breaths as you go, okay? Now the last thing, that I want to share with you. I don't know that this one has been as beneficial to hip realignment as it just, it just feels really, really great on my spine. Um, and I know that the spine is impacted with the misalignment of the hips and then also the overcompensation of all of the other parts of the body, all the other areas of the body that are kind of picking up the slack as our hips are, you know, a little out of whack. So I like to roll my spine. This is a yoga wheel. Um, you can get them online. Pretty sure I got this one at TJ Maxx several years ago, um, but they're fantastic. I absolutely love them. I do this every single day, um, and it just helps to, to decompress the spine, and just it just feels so good. It's like a little mini massage for your spine. So I'll show you how I use it. So I like to start by bringing it to the base of my spine, to my tailbone. My feet are planted. Sometimes I'll just have my heels down, and I like to start just by coming here and just beginning to kind of introduce my spine to the idea of being curved in this position. I'll take a couple breaths here. And then using either my hands or my feet or a combination of the two, I just start to roll on it. Make sure your hair is not caught under it like mine just was because that's not going to feel very good. And we're just 
just going to roll. You'll definitely feel it pop. You might have just heard mine pop. My spine just popped a couple times. But rolling back and forth on this is the best. <laughs> it is the best. So again, normally I'll do that for a minute or two um, consecutively. Just over and over and over again. Just going over my spine and it's, like I said it feels really really good it's a deep release for the spine um, a lot of opportunities for it to pop um, which just releases tension releases pressure allows you to create more length and more space which is another thing I'll address in a different video in order for our hips to begin to realign we have to create the space for that now I do have a happy hips video here on my channel feel free to go and check it out I'll link it here in the um, in the caption of the video as well. Um, but you want to make sure you're creating space in the hips. So before you do any of these things, maybe take a couple of minutes and do some cat-cow, do some child's pose to create space, warm up the hips and those muscles and joints, and then move into some of these postures and these practices that are gonna help you to begin to realign your pelvis and your hips. Um, ultimately, take it slow. This is a process, right? You know, this misalignment happens over the course of time, sometimes years and years and years. I know mine has been several years in the making. So undoing that is also going to take some time, right? So be patient with yourself. Take your time. Breathe through it. Don't expect to do one of these and have everything fixed over the course of like a 24-hour span because that's not how it's going to work, right? The discomfort, the dis-ease, the dysfunction didn't happen overnight. So the quote-unquote fix isn't going to happen overnight, right? This is chronic pain that's going to require some long-term attention, right? But we can do it naturally. We can do it safely. And um, yeah, we can begin to create more ease within the context of our own body and our own lived experience. Uh, one final thing that I would recommend is reducing any highly inflammatory foods. Uh, I know that I can definitely experience and, and tell kind of an uptick in my discomfort when I consume a lot more refined foods, a lot more sugary foods. Those types of foods tend to create more inflammation in the body. So reducing highly inflammatory foods while also incorporating more herbs that are anti-inflammatory in nature or foods that are anti-inflammatory in nature can be really helpful along this journey towards you know, realigning everything. And ultimately, the, dis the misalignment is creating some inflammation. So if we can reduce that by the foods that we're consuming, then that's only gonna help our efforts even more. So, that's what I have for you today. I know it's a little bit different, but I hope it has served you. Uh, I hope this is helpful. Um, again, my recommendation would be to do a combination of all of these, you know, maybe start with the one that speaks to you the most. Start with the one that you have the resources to do right now. Like if all you have is your kid's ball, then grab your kid's ball and start with that one. Begin activating your deep core to help with the realignment. And, uh, you know, maybe hit up a TJ Maxx and see if they have a yoga wheel. They definitely will have a foam roller um, and start incorporating some of those things, too, so you can create more ease within your body. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, yogis.